Welcome to the Ox Tools Terrain Texture Mapper Tool video overview. I'm going to go over how to map textures to your height field masks. First, I'll go over my height field setup, then the materials I used, and finally we'll put it together with the tool, map it to the height field masks, and render our output. So what that'll look like is this. First, let's go into our height field. All right, so first here I have my high field, my noises. Uh, I have an erode node that'll create a few masks on its own, such as debris, sediment, water. Uh, I have a few custom masks I have set up and I have the output of them easy for me to just click on and see. My grass mask, rock mask, and sand mask. Okay, and then I convert my height field to polygons. And then for me, I want to run auto UV or else the UVs will be very stretched uh, with the mountains as they are very steep. Now, if you don't have a very steep terrain, I recommend skipping this step. In order to run auto UV, you definitely need to reduce the polygons or else the tool will time out, Houdini will crash, also, it's hard to get to look really good. So we run the poly reduce, the auto UV, we subdivide to get more information back and then use a ray node to bring back some of the details from the original high field. We transfer the color back on in case you wanna use that in your rendering at all. Then I just have an output node that will make sure that, the, that this is what's rendered. I have a visualize UVs node here so I can see what's going on with the UV. Now that the height field's set up, let's go over the materials. So I have a utility up here that comes with the tool suite, aux colon redshift, and we can use the textures to redshift. And in here, we can go to any one of these textures and just by being in this folder and clicking accept, it'll go in this folder and parse any of the textures that are there. But if we just select a folder that has many textures, this will import all of these textures. All right, so I have all these textures here and let's see how that import went. All right, now let's go over the texturing tool material. Okay, so if we type in aux, go down to the terrain mapper, terrain texture mapper. And first of all, we need to tell it, we need to let it know the node that contains the mask information. So we'll go to the height field, out mask is where I have all my masks. Now we need a name for the composite material that will be created. RS uh, comp mat. It's good for me. And now we can click on update mask sources and this will bring in all the height field masks from our terrain. And all I need to do is map my textures to them, drop them right in here. So my rock is limestone. My debris is this grassy cliff. Uh, grass and desert sand. <clears throat> All right, now that I have my materials here, I need to specify the order. So low, lowest value is on top. I want my debris on top, then I want my sand, and then my grass, and then my uh, limestone. So the values don't matter, just the order. Okay, now it's ready to create my material. Go ahead and click Create. It'll create it in the center of your network, wherever that is. I'll just put it right here. Now, if we create it again, it'll actually delete and recreate it. But since it already has a spot, it will stay in that spot going forward, so long as it has the same name that's specified in the tool. Okay, so let's see what this created. All right, it brought in my four textures 
And over here on the right, it's applying all the masks for the three different texture types needed for our redshift material, the surface, displacement, and bump map. And I have these networks closed by default just for just to simplify, but if we look in here, we have all of our nodes. All right, uh, notice this, that all these nodes are actually referenced to the material. So anything we change here will change in the original material. So that's easy if you want to go back and forth and rerun the, rerun the script later and it'll have the same results. All right, we can also set it so that it doesn't link any of these. Um, personally, I like to have that checked, but this one's important link texture scale. So if we don't link the texture scale, what will happen is it'll adjust the texture scale based on this grid size. So the scale of my materials at one looks good at a base grid size of 25 for this uh, terrain. So if I run this again, and looking at my material, Okay, the scale is now 20. So that's my terrain size of 500 divided by the base scale of 25, and that gives us a scale of 20. Okay, so the last thing is you need to make sure that your material is assigned correctly. Um, let's go to Scotmat, Wapnet. And now we should be good to go. And there we are. Beautiful landscape. So with very little effort, we can get a lot more detail and realism by mapping some real textures to our terrain. One thing to note is notice the there's going to there'll be quite a big difference if you have displacement set on and if your displacement range, you may want to change your displacement range to a negative one in the min if your terrain is looking bloated. So I do like this result better. Displacement will go inward and outward. And I'm getting more of a look that I wanted. All right, uh, last thing to mention is this tool works for both Redshift and Karma. Um, this tool is definitely focused on Redshift. In the future, it'll be equally focused with Karma as soon as the Karma GPU or the Karma XPU, which does the GPU rendering, is supported by the nodes. Right now, the MTLX nodes that are used to merge the textures together are not supported by Karma XPU. So we just have to wait for that. Um, the material X right now for Karma CPU, it's it works. It's just slow, uh, but it's there if you, if you want to play with it.